Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes, of course, and I'm thrilled you could be with us today. One of the things that has been happening over the course of more than a century is the amazing thinning of the veil that always has existed between this level of reality and most of the greater reality, including where the dead reside. Before the middle of the 19th century, there was very little afterlife communication reported, although I really think it was happening. But then at mid-century came the Fox sisters, and after that came a flood of increasingly evidentiary communications from people that we used to think were dead. Some of them were channeled by higher level beings who were spokesmen for vast collectives, but many of them simply were recently dead folks who wanted to reconnect with loved ones still on earth. Then came the turn of the 20th century, which was the heyday of deep trance mediums, which is a kind of mediumship communication much more effective than the mental mediumship that is most of what we have today. A lot of the sessions with deep trance mediums were documented and preserved. We've talked about them here with Riley Haggerty, Michael Tim, and others. They're an amazing record of the first modern efforts that were made by the dead to get through to us the fact of their eternal survival. And now the veil is thinning even more. Of late, I'm finding that even someone as lacking in mediumistic abilities as yours truly can communicate directly with my spirit guide more and more easily. We don't even need a medium anymore. And I'm hearing from grieving widows just in the past year that some loving couples actually now can continue their sexual relationships after death, believe it or not. More and more often, too, open-hearted people are willingly being used by spirit to get through to us, ever more of us, the simple fact that we are all really do survive. Today, our guest is one such open-hearted servant of spirit. Chris Fitting is known as the spirit illustrator, and he works as an evidential medium, a spirit portrait artist, energy management specialist, teacher, speaker, and writer. Chris is with us today to talk about his own work and also to share with us the excitement of our dear friend Sandra Champlain's next wonderful event. We Don't Die Radio or Orlando is going to run from March to March 31st of 2019. Chris, welcome. I'm so happy to have you with us today. Hmm. Okay, well, let's talk about something else then briefly. Um, as you know, we are doing this live, and so when we're live, who knows what things might happen. But um, nevertheless, we are uh, we're here and we're going to talk. What I've discovered about this period of time is that more and more as we come to understand what's going on, there's an effort being made and it's being orchestrated at the very highest levels of reality to get through to us of the fact that we survive. Why didn't they do this sooner? It's very difficult to know why they didn't do this sooner. I think primarily the reason was that until very recently, um, it was useful to them that we didn't really understand what is going on. But now, though, um, I think we may have Chris back. Chris, are you with us now? I am. I think Spirit's well, playing a joke on us here. Oh, my goodness. That was terrible. And I, I had to like, well, now, what am I going to say for 15 minutes when I haven't prepared anything? I was getting into it, though. I was getting into it. I was explaining to everybody that there's this amazing thinning of the veil seems to be very deliberate on the part of the people that we used to think were dead. And, and what they seem to be doing is, uh, as I've said in my blog posts, and as we've actually also said on this program, uh, they're trying to get to us the fact that, of our survival, so we'll begin to raise the consciousness vibration of the whole planet. Now, the work that you do is part of that, and, and is, I think, very important. Tell us a little bit about your background, Chris, so we can better understand. Well, let me start at the beginning. I, I've been connected, I think, since the beginning for me, um, and like many of us who are connected it's normal and standard so that it, our attention isn't drawn to it. It doesn't seem irregular until we have comparative measures. So when so you're you may, saying when you were a child even, or when did you first understand you had this kind of ability? <laughs> well, I've, 
it may have not been as pronounced, but it was certainly there. Really? So it's always been, it's been there for me to grab and handle. Um, and I've always felt connected. Uh, but along the way, it became more pronounced. Um, I had seen things before they would happen. And largely, you know, when I dre- dreamt, um, I would have vivid dreams and they would come through very clearly. And then similar events would parallel sort of the symbology that I had seen. And, and it just seemed too similar to just write off. So that's the beginning of sort of my awareness in a, a spiritual sense to events, foreshadowing events. And um, as that developed and as I paid more and more attention, it, it, it blossomed. So every time you take a step towards the spirit world, the veil takes two steps towards you. <laughs> And, so, uh, and it were, propels were these forward. Pre- precognitive dreams you were having, like so you would dream something and then it would happen in real life, that kind of thing. Right, correct. So um, wow. when it first started yeah. happening, <laughs> when it first started happening, I would send myself emails so that I'd have a time dated stamped, you know, something that was official, so that if I wanted to bring it to someone's attention after it had happened, I could show them what I'd written and how it had had, had come out, and then. I, I, my mind works that way where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm questioning it myself and I want to know yes. that I'm not changing anything. It's very exact to what I thought would happen and then compare it to what did. So that's how it started. And I'd send myself emails about events and then they may unfold within, um, within a particular timeline. And the interesting thing was, is the more I paid attention to these events and, and, and the unfolding of them, the closer the timeline would become. So I might, at the beginning, I'd, I'd have a dream or, or an idea about something that would happen in, in the future, and then um, it may happen or unwind in six weeks. But the more focus and attention I placed on this happening, the, the, the two events would be closer and closer. So it, it ended up that I might actually have the precognition um, the day of something happening or before it actually happened. Um, because I was putting, placing so much intention on understanding what it was that was happening. Now, were so, were yeah. you very young then when this was happening to you? Um, it was very subtle when I was young. Uh, oh, okay. You know, uh, you know anything from, you know, it, it just paying attention to the intuitive abilities. But you know, an example would be, you know, on being on the football field and and and, and knowing that where the football was going to be run or what play was going to be called beyond just, you know, a technical sense of the game, yeah. sort of an intuitive thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, with, and you, did this seem normal to you, like everybody probably has this? Or did, when did you realize it was different, that there was something different about your abilities? Uh, the, the, when I started to pay attention to uh, precognition um, and sort of the senses that something was happening, um, the more vivid it became and the more vivid it became, it was like, you can't, you can't just write this off now. You know, if you're going to see somebody uh, come down with an illness or you see a plane crash and at first it's tragedy, oh, wow. there's a lot of yeah. tragedy because those, get, those get your attention, oh, yes. you know, but you can, you know, <laughs> I find you can adjust that. You can tame that a little bit. Right. You can I mean, if you want the good things in your life, you want to you kind of want the signpost about the good things in your life that are coming. You can have those, too. It's just that's where you place your intention, more or less. So that's how it happened. It was very subtle when I was young. It was like a tickle or a dusting. But then as I began to get older, it was more like a sledgehammer. And, you know, you had to do something about it. Um, so um, and as I, as yes, I said, right when way. I opened what, what we are doing right now is seeing the veil thin and you're giving us a graphic illustration of that in your own life that that what had been a thicker veil became thinner and thinner as time went on and you got older. That's great. So right, what, yeah. but did you did you start doing this for other people when you were young or when did you start doing this for other people? <clears throat> well, what was amazing to me was um, I, I didn't grow up in a religious environment. Uh, it, it was there for me, but I didn't grab it. I didn't. I wasn't drawn to it. I didn't gravitate to it. Um, and being a young child, even though I had some of the experiences I had, I kind of felt like uh, it was it was confusing. But I didn't feel like life continued. 
And then as I began to get older and it came to unfold more, then I, I really realized that that was out there. And that caught me. And I went, wow, you can have experiences with people that have passed and share their consciousness, yes. their moments of their life. And you can see those things. And you can share those with other people who have lost people in their lives they love. You know, maybe that they didn't get to communicate with before they left or they felt like there's, you know, there's, there's, they're missing those people and you can fill that gap. That's when it became important for me to share what I do is to help people understand they're still there. They're still sharing your space. Yes. They're still in your environment. Yes. And, and, and this is important to know. They're just in the other room, right? Metaphorically. Yes. Speaking. So that was Gosh, one of the they're, important. They're, they're not even that far away, actually. <laughs> right. But, You're right. Yeah, you're right, an artist. Right. So were you an artist before you started drawing people that are not in bodies? Were you an artist before? It's so funny to uh, to to hear people to hear you say I'm an artist and, and I am an artist. I'll own that, right? But I, I didn't paint myself with that idea when I was younger. Um, it was you know me with crayons and just doing what most kids do. But I sort of had this interest in the composition of the body and face types and styles and. And I had this database, I think, that spirit kind of went through their, their Rolodex of people that might have uh, that mediumship <laughs> bug and went, this guy yeah. is, yeah, he knows. You <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. If you show up, if you show up right. at all, they right. will, they'll use what you have. That's exactly right, right. Chris. Isn't that, yeah. isn't yeah. that funny? <laughs> so, so, wait, so, you, so you started to see people, though, who were in, not in bodies, right? And then you, you would draw them. How did that begin? Well, um, I noticed that I could, um, you know, like you stare at the clouds and you see things that kind of, oh, that looks like this or that, you know, it sort of changes yes. and morphs and, and shapes. Okay, well, I can look at the texture in a wall and things will pop out at me. And, and, and I, my eye has always been good at catching particular facets um, like that and even as a young child, so it's 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 almost like that. I don't completely understand it, but I have this ability to be able to look into or scry into uh, something and and see imagery or faces. And um, with photography and taking pictures and looking at orbs closely, I'd start to see things kind of pop out within the rough uh, electronic imagery of the of the photograph or the. Um, the pixels and I would enlarge the areas and I'd see things and I'd talk to people about them and they would hit home with, Oh yeah, I know the guy with the beard or the glasses and, you know, older oh. and I described them a little bit and they would say, okay. So I'd say, well, and they may not see it with the detail I had. They just couldn't quite grab what I was seeing. And it was easier for me. It became easier at some point just to enlarge it and really replicate it with my hands based on that crayon knowledge I had from the, from the youngster. You know, and, the, and and those artistic abilities, because I do have a family of, of people who are very artistic, and, and some of them are on the other side, and I do believe they help me um, and and work with me to help my clairvoyance and, and those things come out. So, yeah, so that's kind of how that came about was my love of photography and, and electronic imagery and then really looking into what I saw in the photograph and pulling that out. And, and, and after a while, it, the camera was a tool to begin with, and it – it wasn't as necessary. Um, now it's just that piece of paper with a little pastel dusting. And, you know, that roughness, the features will, will rise and kind of come to my awareness. And if my eyes aren't catching it, then my hands certainly know more than sometimes my mind. And they find the, the ear and the hair and, and the certain attributes. And, and you kind of almost become that person as you draw them. You, you know, you feel lethargic or heavy or it might be a little bit harder to breathe or, or you really? feel that you're, you know, maybe – balding yeah there's this it's um you know, feel you're uh, balding <laughs> well, some things are not as much fun to feel as other things right. well, right, so, so right. Are, you, are, are you with someone then this is a relative or a loved one of someone that you're sitting with who's that you're trying to help them connect is that what's going on well um during my readings um that's that's what we do we you know i work through a um an evidential mediumship session uh -huh. And, you know, I desire to bring through, you know, symbolism and artifacts or timelines or relationships. And then, you know, after we get into the flow of it, um, I'll begin to draw and I talk and my hands and eyes are in one space and, and my talking is in another. And, 
and sometimes they confuse each other. But but what happens is I begin to compri- com- comprise a likeness of an individual that will have passed, and then um, then we begin. You know, I, uh, I'll talk about the person, and then that's when they say yes, no, or I need more information, and we begin to comprise a, a collage of of my feelings and what I'm seeing and, and everything that creates this portrait for this person. So that's, it comes together in a likeness um, uh, there. I have had instances where you, you'll get, you know, a couple people that come in and kind of don't, can't wait their turn and you get, you do get a collage of your yeah. father's eyes, but you know, your brother's, you know, something else. And, and so there is that that happens. And, um, you know, to be honest, um, uh, from time to time we'll we'll have a face or something that comes through and the person will just be, you know, I don't know who this is. And it's, and I said, that's okay because, you know, just, just hold it and wait. And then it may be three weeks or five weeks or a year and you get that phone call and they say, I know who this is, really? Really? <laughs> you know, this, this really? is, yeah, this is somebody. Yeah. And it, and it triggers and it makes sense. I, I did a guide portrait for a, a woman not too long ago. And uh, she, you know, it must have been over a year ago, and she kept thinking it was one person, and then it was another, and then suddenly she had a reading from somebody else, and she looked up the name, and then the picture that I drew matched with the information that she received, and it all just came together so nicely. And so these things unfold in their own timing, okay. well, and, and that's just the thing you have that. to remember. Chris, I, I don't want to get past that. Um, this was yeah. a picture of, of a guide of hers that you were drawing. You said it was a guide? Yeah. And, and Right. But so there, yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> Um, so there are guide. We have guide portraits um, that we offer, and some are pencil, and some are color, and some are kind of an archetypal guide, which is a little bit different, sort of a series of guide. Yes. But this one happened to be a pencil portrait that I had done, and it was funny because I had done a pencil portrait, and then the person in spirit said, "No, I really want, I really want to you to illustrate a colored portrait." So she had purchased one, but I, I listen to spirit. And if they say no, she needs this, then I do it. Because I've learned. Well, <laughs> and, so, but but uh, how, and, how did she know what her guide looked like? So how would she have recognized that's a great, that? That was a great. That's a great question. And and with any of these, if you don't have your, so you trust your own personal experience um, when it comes to the guides I and, think and so, your yes. interaction with them. Now, but the other thing is, is if you go to a spirit portraits artist like myself and you ask for a guide portrait, we don't always know who's going to come through. I set my intention on the guide. When this p- picture comes through, this, this portrait of them, I get information, um, I see the imagery, um, and then I offer this to them what I have. And I, and I tell them, keep, your, you know, keep an open mind. Here's my idea of, of what I've seen and what I'm being told and see if it correlates with yours. But also, if you have another interaction with the spirit portrait artist or any other information that you think can you know, collaborate with this, then use that. And if you go to two spirit portrait artists and they come up, you know, who don't know each other and come up with a very similar idea of this particular guide, then you have a pretty good darn oh, yeah. idea. Oh, yeah. It feels right. And you also have to pay attention. You really important is paying attention. Does this feel right? You know, you have to ask yourself those questions. And if you're in tune with that, then you'll know um, that that's, that should feel right for you. Oh. So, yeah. I, I wouldn't, I actually wouldn't know what my guy looks like. I know what he looked like in a previous lifetime, but apparently he looks nothing like that now. But that is fascinating. So does this help people to feel that they're able to better communicate with their guides if they have a picture they can focus on? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so here's, here's the bottom line is when I do this, there is a closeness or a connection that people feel with their guides and it really helps with the development so that they can, they have a, people sometimes need a face and they need a name. I I was one of the people who didn't feel that I needed. There are people that do it. It's a very important to them. Yeah. Having a closer relationship within any, in any extent, having that closer relationship helps them develop that relationship. It becomes more real to them and, and they can quantify it in the logical part of their mind and and then it allows for any of those blocks to kind of unfold, and they glean so much more information from the experience, and they're looking for those things. One one of the things I like to do when I do the guide portrait is I'll tell people, this is what he's showing me. This is what she's showing me or telling me that she she grabs your awareness with. 
And you know, we've we've heard about butterflies and, and yes. people see these rainbows. And, but but one of the you know, there's particular things that you wouldn't think of. Like one of the uh, guides I drew last week, the woman, um, it was ivy. He's like, I place ivy in your way, in your place, and that you know, it grows up the walls or on the trees. And oh. when you see ivy, you know, it was. And I thought, well, that's a lovely way to bring you know an awareness, you know to to you so you may be walking and, and there may be ivy all the time but they'll bring your awareness to it and you're like oh my guide's with me and they're and i'm thinking about that guide now so it provides that platform for you to invite them in think about those aspects and say well you know and just have a moment of a connection or a thought and within that moment you grab what you needed so wow. knowing their knowing their doorbell that they use to gain your awareness can be a, a nice tool to have in your handbag yeah, I, I strongly recommend that everyone develop a, a better understanding and relationship uh, with our with your primary guide because um, it it enriches your life so much and it gives you so such a better understanding of what where you are and what you're supposed to be doing. Otherwise, I, I realize now before I had a close relationship with my guide, he was still guiding me, but I was flying so much more blind than I am now. So I, that's something I really yeah. urge people to do. But so so you you this is what you basically do. Um, it is help people to connect this way to people that. But you also do regular readings too, right? Like like uh, you're, a, right. you're a mental medium also. Yes, uh, yeah, evidential mental medium um, is what I do. So I provide evidence um, snippets. You know, I'll, I'll see snippets of movies of about people's lives, and I'll see symbolism and I'll hear names and words um, and I get all the feels so as I work through it um, I share the information that comes through to help provide the evidence that they're there um, I will do uh, spirit portraits of those who have passed not just guides um, and then I um, afterwards um, if they want to volunteer a picture then I'll do a comparison so that we can kind of get a measure on how accurate it was um, and it's always lovely to see when they when they come through and it's very similar, which, you know, which is why when I do the guide portraits, I feel like, you know, there really is um, some relevance to doing that you know, after, after doing a series of spirit portraits of people who've been in your life that have passed and having those similarities and likenesses come through. Then when you get your guide portrait, you're kind of like, OK, you know, there's a track history of this. And so I know that this is probably very much like what my guide looks like. So, so I do the evidential readings. I do. Go ahead. Let, let, let's talk about the evidential readings um, because yeah. I think many people who go to a medium um, so will sometimes feel dissatisfied because it felt vague. You know, well, everybody has it's a grandma, that sort of thing. But a good evidential medium will will come up with things that nobody could have guessed. Right. What, what are some of the, right. what are, for example, what are some of the bits of evidence that you've been able to give people that made them say, "Aha! I know you've you've hit him. That's who he is." That's that's lovely. Yeah. Um, so very good question. Um, in between the evidential information, um, we'll get pieces of their life and oftentimes what they've been doing the night before. So that's, they go, how did you know I was there and I got the new wheels? So we keep coming back to current events, and then we jump back into the character, and we keep cor corroborating information in between. But some of the best information, um, the evidential information, may come from the portrait itself, the likeness. But here's the thing. If you're in spirit and you're coming to visit with people you love, and, and I'm the medium, the portrait is important for evidential reasons, but it's not the message. Yes. The message is what's important. And that's the most important part of what I do is, is the, they can, they can lean heavily that they have the evidential information and that side of it, but it's the message that resonates. It's where they are in life and the support that they're offering and what they're being given that the love and the understanding and the forgiveness and the, I see you every day. I'm still part of your life message, you know, and then, and then, working in you know the current events of their life or the wedding that had just happened or the the baby that was just born or the uh, the the defeat or the depression that they were suffering and how they were resilient and came through those things those are the important that's that's the, the evidence is always it is oftentimes in the message yes um, you know and there are things that you can't deny i you know you get names yes. um in cities and occupations great. 
but very often <laughs> it's hard, right? I mean, I, I've, I've been told by some mental mediums that one of the hardest things to do is come up with names. Um, I, I think because the people now in in spirit are not as focused on that. I have no idea why. But so you, well, you find you you can get names then, right? Um, and and sometimes they'll trip you up because you get your mind in there. Um, there are some mediums that I've worked with uh, mentors of mine that have said, you know, if you if you study names, that works, but it only works for your era, right? Because uh, there there are you know years ago there were more I- irises and irenes today right. than there might, than there might be today. So your yes. your database is what they're going to trigger when it comes to those familiarity. So one of the things I did early on is I went to the Social Security database and took the 100 most common names over the last 100 years for men and women. And oh. I read them just so I had that familiarity with those names and, oh. that, and that vibration, yes. right? So, so when you do those things, then, what you ha- then you have that database that, that they can go through their Rolodex again and go, this guy, you know, we can probably trigger this and, and they'll work with you on those names so if you're not seeing the you know the name clairvoyantly, you're not seeing it written out. You might hear it, and as long as you have those databases, that you know that can help you assist with with the and they're great data points um, yes. to work with. But the the other thing is when you're working with names, if you're consciously if you're in your conscious mind thinking and asking and working for the name, then you're in your mind, and it and, yes. and you may confuse yourself. But but if you're in your space giving your reading and in the Philip. Philip pops up. You're like, well, Philip, okay. Where'd that come from? It's like, it's like you're cleaning yeah. your closet and you find a cheeseburger and you're like, what's the cheeseburger doing in my closet? Right. It's just right. that when that, it doesn't belong. It's different than everything yes. else. And then that's when you know. So you have to almost weigh it on a register of, was this name, was this occurrence out of the ordinary or was I reaching for it too hard? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of that. And I think that's the challenge for the mental mediums is if they're trying to get names, and they're working at it versus if they're open to it and they tell spirit, I get names, dust me with that information when you have the opportunity. Yes. And then as you begin to give the reading, it'll interrupt you and you go, oh, who's Philip? Who's Sam? Who are these people? Well, let, let's talk about another thing that, that you do. Now, we are energy beings. All of us are energy beings. And because our you know medical and even mental health uh, uh, practitioners are all wrapped up in physical stuff. Very often they find it hard to help us. But one of the things you do is to help people with energy management. Can you talk about that? Wow, that's a lovely question, right? So um, at the Spirit Illustrator, uh, spiritillustrator.com, we're now beginning to provide an opportunity to mentor some people uh, with energy management. And and what is energy management? Well, (laughs) there's an awareness of our senses. And amplifying that awareness only helps you in your understanding and seeking more information about spirit. It's a little, little bit like decanting a fine wine. And as you put that wine in the glass, you know, it, it, it opens and airs and the flavors really begin to come out and it becomes more complex. Well, your sight and your hearing and your feeling are all very similar. So you can open up, you know, open up the awareness of your understanding of time open up your understanding of your of what you're hearing. You know, so if you're working clairaudiently and you'd like to hear more, can you work in an energy management technique that amplifies the sound a little bit for yourself? And and how do you go about that? Where do you place that idea? Is that happening in your conscious mind or is this something that's happening in the unconscious mind and it's complementing your intent or your interest or your intrigue? So energy management is a kind of a holistic approach in all the aspects and our understandings and our senses and, and, and finding the harmony within the harmony, finding the flavor within the flavor, finding the notes within the notes. So all of the fine striations that are available to us in the information, we can amplify those for ourselves and become finer mediums. We can become better people and not just a mediumistic quality, but if you're a musician, and you want to you want to have that richer co or chord or depth, then you can find a technique that helps you find the chord within the chord, and you can really accentuate and amplify aspects using your energetic field to change things to help oh, wow. your understanding enrich. Yeah. So, so what, 
What are the kinds of people who would come to you for that sort of thing? People who are artists and musicians? Um, or or is right. this something where if you feel that you're out of sorts in your life, can this help you in a more general way? Right. So it, it, it interwines into every facet of your life. And if you're having a difficult time um, coping or understanding or getting what you want out of out of a facet of your life, then by opening those that awareness up and creating reference points of interest in your in your subconscious mind too, it allows it to unfold and grow in a way that complements your conscious waking world. So um, just softening your energy, being you know. A common analogy is when you walk into a busy room, if you just pause for just a moment before you go in there and collect, just even a fraction of a second, and just with this idea that before I go in, I'm not going to carry all these other conversations, all these other troubles, all these other ideas that I had in this past room. I'm going into a new room, and you surrender that for a moment, reconnect, and just have this awareness you're so, you, you, if, you've, if you've done your work, your subconscious and your conscious minds are working together, and you walk in and you're an entirely different person. You've left those things behind. You're free to go in and absorb, interact, intermingle, and create you know, your, own, your own experience. It's going to be different than if you hadn't done that. And that is an energy management technique. It's very simple that a lot of people can practice. If we just took the pause just before we spoke, just before we accepted an invitation, just before we did anything, you know, and just connect really quickly. It's, it, it will provide you with a much easier life, I believe. The universe wants to conspire to help you in so many ways. Well, just let it. That, that <laughs> seems very empowering. I mean, if you are able to sort of reorient yourself freshly for a, a new experience, you don't carry over. Because most people do carry over, um, you know, bad things that happen to them today or, or various levels of grouchiness. Um and it, it would be wonderful to be able to just clean that out. And you're saying that this is one thing we can learn to do? Right. And so you, imagine what that would do, does to one's intuitive abilities. Yes. When you're able to kind of clear, clear your palate before you walk into the room. Because as children, you know, we'd walk into the room and the parents will have been fighting. And you walk in and you look, oh, is everything okay in here? And they look at you and, oh, yeah, we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> and they're telling you not to trust your intuitive ability, right? Because right, you're like, right. I just could feel the tension in here. And now, of course. So, so this whole idea, <laughs> right, this whole idea of just stopping and pausing and releasing and opening and, 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 and just setting yourself up for success in that situation can completely change the outcome. And it's a small thing that we do on a very small level that can have inf- infinite changes and possibilities in the outcomes of what you're about to enter into, set yourself up for that success. So energy, man, is just one small facet, one small facet that, that you'll have. But um, it'll help amplify – the idea is to, is, is to set you up to succeed and trust your intuitive abilities, but not just in the mediumistic quality. If you're a cook and you're cooking food, you know, and, and you're thinking about the aromas and you're thinking, you know, about the texture of the foods – and, and it becomes amplified for you um, and, and allowing people to have more of what they want in the dish that you're preparing or less of it based on you, the person preparing it in their energetic field. You, you, do you believe that and the question is, is, do you believe that your energetic field can have an effect over the things you prepare? So if we have two people preparing food and one is arguing while they're preparing food for the children and the other one is listening to music yes. and sipping wine and, and they're preparing the same dish. Yeah. Are they going to taste the same? Yeah, yeah. This is fascinating. So there's, there's but w- one thing I think we really need to do, though, is talk about we don't die Orlando <laughs> dot com, um, and we are we don't oh, die, yeah. die Orlando. The the wonderful Sandra Champlain, who is our dear friend on Seek Reality, has developed yeah. this way of doing weekend conferences which frankly are turning out to be fantastic this one looks great and you're one of the presenters this the dates are march 29th to 31st of this year 2019 um but i i don't think this is gonna be the last one chris because the one that you did in boston was so successful but tell us a little more about it what will you be doing there right 
Right. Well, there and there's there uh, quickly there's there's events flanking it too. So even the day before and the day after, there's some workshops that people are interested in at that. So it, it kind of extends it to a five day extravaganza. Um, I but am you don't working have with the for five days. I think that's important. No. Many people just don't yeah. have the time, but there's the meat of it you can get in those three days, which yeah. I think is great. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, absolutely. So. Um, I was saying, uh, Jennifer, I'll be working with the lovely Jennifer Brazier. She can be found at jenniferbrazier.com. She's a wonderful evidential medium who brings through facts and pieces of, of information that are sort of irrefutable, if you will. Um, and she just does a lovely job of bringing through not only the evidential, but the feel of the person. And while she's on stage connecting to people in spirit, I will be connecting to these people as well. And I'll be drawing their likenesses while oh. she is talking about them and their lives. So oh, great. Um, it frees, it, yeah, it frees me up to be able to talk uh, about, or I'm sorry, to be able to draw the things that I do while she's talking. Because sometimes it's hard when you're the illustrator yes. to be doing the drawing and the talking at the same time. So it's um, it'll be a lovely, uh, a lovely event, and uh, we're just really, really looking forward to to showing people what's possible and, and inspiring people. Yeah. Anybody who's interested in, in learning more can just go to robertagrimes.com and click on, there's a, there's a banner ad there. Just click on the ad and you can get all the information, but I'm sure this isn't going to be the last one she does. I think Sandra is such a powerhouse. How did you meet Sandra? Well, we have a common friend and she was um, lovely enough to be able to, uh, introduced me when Sandra began to put these together and right. said, Chris, I think you'd be good for this. And we had some long conversations about um, was the timing right? Is everybody ready to see this? Is is And as you had mentioned, you know, the thinning of the veils and the world, you know, is really waking up and, and there is a timing to everything. And it felt right after we talked about it, that it was time that people had a, a greater awareness of, of what Sandra was trying to communicate and what how we could complement that message. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, there other people are going to be there too. Uh, Sonia Rinaldi will be there, uh, who is yeah. uh, a a I think she's the leading in the world, the leading um, uh, ITC instrumental transcommunication um, technician. Nobody here is an expert. Everybody who is an expert is is not in a body. But they work with people here, and Sandra seems to be the – I mean, um, Sonia seems to be the one they most want to work with. She's coming up from Brazil. And Scott Milligan, who is a wonderful um, uh, um, physical medium, is going to be there and a c- close friend of Sandra's. And so many other people. It's such a – I mean, you can sort of see if you, I, I'm amazed she can fit all of that into just a few days, but she can. And that's a wonderfully efficient way to help people learn. Because the reason to go to these events is because you can soak up so much knowledge. You can talk with the people who are really doing the work. It's very different from reading. If all you're doing is reading, you know, yeah, you put it down, you go, go to work, you come back, you read a little more. But if you're there, um, it's it's just a life changing experience. So I'm delighted that um, you're here to help us get to excited about her <laughs> her next event. Um, we don't we don't die Orlando. Um, now what what is it you want people to know? I mean, obviously this is something that moves you and drives you. What are you trying to help people know or or do for them? Well, I think that. There's a larger sense of who we are than, than we are completely aware. There's so many different levels that we that we exist on, and we are but only a small piece. Our consciousness of who we are is but only a small piece of that. Um, you know, I, I think we're all we're all pieces of, of each other. We're you know, if if the ocean is everything, and we are all scoops of that, each of us, we are our own glasses, but yet we are still the ocean. And yes. knowing that we are all connected in those respects and that we can interrelate is, is completely important. And also that there, you can access so many different aspects of who you are that will come forward and help you in different times of your life. And when you begin to embrace the idea that you are eternal and that you are complex yes. and that you are connected – 
we're all an interweb of reflections, right? We see what we love in others. We see what we may not like in others because they're pieces of us, those experiences. <laughs> Usually, yes. Act, That's right. <laughs> beginning, yeah. to, beginning to understand these aspects of ourselves, you know, really helps us lead a fulfilled life. And we are here to have an experience that expands us and gives us new reference points and new experiences. And we can empower ourselves in so many ways, not just this conscious, here's who I am in front of me way, but on, on other levels in our lives. Um, and, and inviting those in to play with us and help us live the life we desire to live. That's a very important aspect of why we're here. So we need, we need to allow ourselves to do that. And it's giving ourselves permission we need to know that we are eternal. We need to know that we are complex and we need to know that we are connected. And I think that the overall message is, is, is once we understand and forgive us, forgive ourselves, then it's much easier for us to forgive others that are around us. And we as a world, as a globe, begin to really understand and get along much better than we are today. And we'll find success in our harmonies and our workings together. And, and that's the idea, is that we all begin to tolerate and love each other in a way that's connected. And this is one of the tools that gets us there. So, so your, you, you feel your mission is to help people to connect with other people on a deeper level, uh, and, in a, on a love level as opposed to a sort of fear or superficial level. Right. Is that right? I, I, I Yes, I, I, I think that's a good encapsulation of what I was saying. <laughs> I'm trying. Well, the, th <laughs> the, th the thing is, I mean, one of the things you said there is so profound. I just want to mention it again. If we don't like someone, it's often that we see something of ourselves in them that we don't like in ourselves. Wow, was that profound, Chris. That is so true. Right. Um, the, 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 more, the older I get, the more I come to see that many people that I probably sh should have been kinder to, um, I was not because they reminded me too much of what I didn't like in myself. Wow, that is something to take away. I really appreciate so much your saying that. <laughs> so, so Chris, your, your website is spiritillustrator.com. That's one word. And people can reach you yes. through that website? Yes. Please, you, you're welcome to contact me. There's a contact page, and we've just added a strictly guide page, which is um, a page that is just for ordering portraits of your guides. Um, and there's some different options there, but um, it will. It's just been very popular. Um, it's one of our most popular offerings we've had in a while, and um, people should just take a look and see what they think. But they're also welcome to look at the readings page, um, and I do those regularly. And I try to keep everything priced. Very affordably, um, and you'd be surprised at how inexpensive the portraits actually are. Um, and as a function of being affordable, I'm very busy. There's a wait. There's a little bit of a wait. Well, <laughs> I, I'm so glad you've been here. I'm looking forward to how this um, We Don't Die Orlando goes. Um, Chris, yeah. please consider yourself hugged. Um, I think what you're doing is wonderful. <laughs> And everyone, oh, meanwhile, this you. has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm really glad you could be with us today. Please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began. You never will end. And when you really get that, it's going to change everything in your life for the better. Our guest next week is going to be Anna Castro. She's going to be here to tell us about her wonderful upcoming event in Houston. I love all this. It's called Science and Spirituality Connection. And some of the will be among the people I most admire. It's going to be happening May 24th to May 26th of 2019, so there's a little time to plan for it. And Annabel will be here next week to give us a lot more information. I think this sort of long weekend kind of event is the future of afterlife-related conferences, and I'm delighted to see it. I'm so glad to see them flourishing. Anna is a bright and energetic, really young woman, and which is a very welcome, of course, addition to this field where a lot of us are long in the tooth. So please join Join us next week. This week we've been talking with Chris Fitting. Chris is the spirit illustrator. He works as an evidential medium, a spirit portrait artist, energy management specialist, a teacher, a speaker, and a writer. And as you can see, he's just a delightful person to talk to. He's one of the presenters at our dear friend Sandra Champlain's 
wonderful We Don't Die weekend conference in Orlando, Florida, upcoming March 29th through 31st of 2019. To learn more about what's upcoming in Orlando, you can just go to robertagrimes.com and click on the ad for the conference on my homepage. As you know, my own nonfiction books are Liberating Jesus, My Thomas, The Fun of Dying, The Fun of Staying in Touch, The Fun of Growing Forever, The Fun of Living Together, and soon, I promise, The Fun of Loving Jesus, Embracing the Christianity that Jesus Taught. There's a children's book as well, and all these books are available through bookstores or on Amazon.com, and the adult books are, of course, also available as audiobooks. If you want to talk about any of my books, if you want to talk about anything at all, you can always contact me through robertagrimes.com. I answer every, every email. Just please make sure you give me the right address. Past episodes of Seek Reality are available on webtalkradio.net, realrevolutionradio.com, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and on the wonderful Dream Vision 7 radio family. And they're also available through the Seek Reality app that you can get for free in the iTunes app store. If you enjoy these weekly conversations, you might also want to check out my blog at robertagrimes.com. Uh, it comes out freshly every Sunday. So far, I could miss one. But I use these weekly blog posts to work through some of the things that we talk about here on Seek Reality. And frankly, people are telling me now, some people are telling me that they, they actually keep refreshing <laughs> until it shows up, which to me is amazing. Those are people, of course, who don't live in the Western Hemisphere. They're, they're people who are awake when uh, in the middle of the night when the blog post is posted. But I love doing it, and I'd be eager to hear what you think about what we're talking about there. My whole role in your life is just to make this easier for you. It took me more than almost 50 years to learn what I can now tell you. And I think you could get there in a couple of years' time. All you have to do is spend a little time and you'll you'll be at where I am now. Meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy and make the most of this coming week in our one reality, knowing that you are a powerful, eternal being, and you in particular are infinitely loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything.